The purpose of this video is to go through the main result from the paper from global to local an index band for umbilic points on smooth convex surfaces by myself and Wilhelm Klingenberg which was recently posted to the archive. Now the main result that we're referring to there is this theorem which is that the index of an isolated umbilic point on a C3 plus alpha smooth convex surface in Euclidean 3 space is less than 2. Here C3 plus alpha is the standard holder space but you can just replace that by smooth and uh, the result certainly follows. Okay, so in this video what we're going to do is just give a very brief overview of the proof of this result. The proof is by contradiction. So let's start out and let's look at a convex, a piece of a convex uh, body in R3, convex surface in R3. And let's suppose we have a point on a P which is an isolated umbilic point. Um, moreover, let's assume that this is a counterexample to this theorem. So let's suppose that the index of this uh, umbilic point is equal to 2 plus k over 2 for k greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so here just to umbilic point here means that the second fundamental form has a double eigenvalue at this point uh, because it's isolated in a, a neighborhood of that, it will have a pair of uh, principal foliations and in fact there will be a well-defined well winding number about this umbilic point and this is what we refer to as the index. The foliation may not in fact be oriented so this is an element of z over 2. It's a half integer so the, hence the k over 2 there. Okay, so how do we prove this? Well. The first thing we do is we take this uh, surface and we attach it to a convex, another convex surface, one without umbilic points, we refer to it as an umbilic free hemisphere. And it's a hemisphere here because the um, Gauss map, uh, if you look at the Gauss map, which takes a surface to the direction of its normal, uh, we want it to fill out a hemisphere. So we want the image of this to be a hemisphere on that. Okay, so given that, we can close up the surface in a convex manner, a bit better than that maybe. but in any event we can close it up to uh, in a convex manner to join it up to this and in the annulus between the two we will have uh, umbilic points. Um, generically these umbilic points will be isolated, so let's assume that, and moreover not only will they be isolated but they will be index one half or minus a half, so some will be half, some will be minus a half. Um, we don't know exactly what the distribution of those will be. However, one thing we do know is that the sum of the indices on this part, the sum of the indices of these uh, umbilic points, uh, must be minus k over 2. The reason being they must add with this, there's no umbilic points here, and then the sum of all the umbilics must be 2, the indices must be 2, so this must cancel, this must be minus k over 2. Okay, so the given such an object, that once we had to start out with this, we can construct such a thing relatively easily, and we do two things. The first thing is we cancel the plus one half with minus a half umbilics. So we get rid of all the plus a half. So if you take a plus a half and a minus a half, say here and here, on a small perturbation, you can uh, bring these close together and in fact cancel them and get them down to zero. Uh, what you will end up with then is just minus a halves, because they'll be left over k of them so that they add up to minus k over 2. So the second part uh, is to remove uh, these, the remaining uh, minus a half umbilics um, by a, something we call totally real blow up. Now it's not a blow up in uh, or 3 so, in fact, we'll have to explain this in a little bit more detail. But essentially what we do is we remove the plus halves first, then we get rid of the minus halves, and eventually we'll have a surface with a single umbilic point on it. Okay, so let me just uh, briefly mention how do we go about this totally real blow-up. So the totally real blow-up involves the following transfer. If you look at the set of oriented lines in R3, it's not too hard to see that this is, in fact... TS2. It's a tangent, it's a four manifold. It's uh, TS2, the space of tangent vectors to the two sphere. Um, now, this TS2, in fact, has a lot of structure. It has a, a Kähler structure, a neutral Kähler structure, a metric, which has signature 2, 2, complex structure, and a symplectic structure. Um, this comes in uh, in the proof of the main result, but let me just 
show you just at, at the at a kind of basic level. If you take uh, a surface in R3, convex surface as we had, say S or whatever, and then you look at the oriented normal through a given point, gamma, that's P. Well then, in TS2, which is the set of all orient all normal li oriented lines, um, every one of these points will give rise to this normal line. You will end up with a surface here, which we refer to as sigma, in TS2. So from a surface in R3, we get a surface in uh, TS2. Um, the, the, each line here will correspond to a point gamma. And it turns out the geometry here is very closely related to the geometry here with this neutral Kähler structure. So let, let me just take specifically the case we have at hand. If we have, we're in R3 and we have this point here whose index is um, 2 plus k over 2. And then we have this band down here. Um, here we have our totally real, sorry, our um, umbilic free hemisphere. And here we have these minus one half umbilic points, and this k of this k of these minus a half umbilic points. Okay, so this corresponds in TS two. If you look at the oriented normal lines to the surface, it forms a surface which we call sigma, which is again topologically a sphere. It will have a point up here, which will have a it'll be a complex point rather than an umbilic point. Uh, complex with respect to this uh, complex structure J, and the the index it has an index, and the index of this point will in fact be uh, exactly f twice this, so four plus k. In here we will have these index minus one minus one, uh, twice the index here, minus one, and then you'll have this totally real. It has no complex points down here, so it's totally real. It turns out this will be Lagrangian in fact with respect to the symplectic structure, and again it's a hemisphere. This is class math. It's well defined. Okay, so here's the reformulation from a, a surface in R3 to a surface in TS2. Where does that get us? Well, essentially the next step is this totally real blow-up. The totally real blow-up adds an RP2. So let's think an RP2 is a disk with boundary points identified, antipodally. So you identify antipodal boundary points. Now what you do is you cut a disk out of that and a disk from around say this complex point and you join them up and you identify those two edges. So you do this for each of these k and you get a new surface which is the original surface connect some with k copies of RP2. RP2. Now the claim is that sigma Sigma has the following properties. Properties. So the first property, which I'll call A, is that well, it's it's compact and embedded. All of these constructions were local, and so it's compact and embedded. B, it is um, it contains a totally real. Lagrangian hemisphere. hemisphere, and C, it has a single isolated uh, complex point. Okay, so should we have an umbilic of index 2 plus k over 2 on a surface, we go through this construction, we end up with a surface in TS2, which is compact embedded, contains a totally real Lagrangian hemisphere, and is a single isolated complex point. Has a single isolated complex point. Okay, so at this point we appeal to our results from our global Carathedori conjecture. So from the global Carathedori, the proof of this, uh, which is available on the archive, uh, if you have properties A and B, well then that means you can't have property C. If it's, if it's compact and embedded and contains a totally real Lagrangian hemisphere, well then it must have more than one complex point. Okay, and so therefore this is an impossibility for such as an object to exist. So there is the contradiction. Okay, so before we outline how we're going to run the rest of these videos to go through this uh, proof in more detail, um, it's worth noting that we um, predict that 
from this result from this work that there should be exotic umbilic points. Now, what do we mean by exotic? Well, we work in the smooth category, so we have smooth surfaces, and so our result is that in this category, the index is less than or equal, sorry, is strictly less than uh, two. On the other hand, if you look at the real analytic category, so you look at real analytic surfaces, uh, Hamburger result from the 40s, says that this index is less than or equal to 1. And seeing as how this is a half integer, when you compare those two, in fact, you see that you will have the possibility of a, a surface which is smooth, but not real analytic, which has a, a single, well, has an, a, a, an a umbilic point of index 3 over 2. So we refer to this as an exotic umbilic, and we leave to uh, future work to explain and describe these things. Okay, so um, finally, let me just uh, outline what we're planning to do in the next few videos. The next video, I call it video one for the time being, as this was just a, a, an introduction, uh, it gives you the background on uh, umbilic points and lines of curvature, etc. Video two uh, deals with the re reformulation of the uh, theorem uh, statement of the result in TS2. Um, and this in the paper would be section, this is section one. Uh, video three uh, explains in more detail this totally real blow up and how it works in general. So this will be section two of the paper. And finally in video four, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the global Carthiodori and the global results uh, which this follows from.